So I'm going to open up this hive as I normally would and I'm going to show you the sort of things you'd expect to see when you first open up a hive. Before we open up the hive just have a look at the bees going in and out at the entrance. You can see some of them have got pollen on their legs, different colours, some of it's yellow, some of it's beigey colour. So first of all I get my smoker which is here. This is using a mixture of sacking and corrugated cardboard. You can use all sorts of things, sawdust, wood shavings, pine cones even. The idea is that it um, calms the bees a little when you blow smoke in and also it's useful for moving the bees around. So before I start, I'll put a little bit of smoke into the entrance of the hive just to let them know I'm here. And then I take the roof off, put it down by the side. And this is a crown board with the Abello hive. Uh, it's slightly more complicated than with a wooden hive. Um, I should explain about this hive. It's an Abello hive. It's German make. It's made of polystyrene. Um, traditionally hives are made of timber, but more and more people are going over to polystyrene hives. The main reason being that they're far better insulated than the wooden hives. So this is a polystyrene crown board. Take it off, put it down here. And here we have a super. And this is where the bees store the honey. Um, you'll see later on that the queen is kept separate. She doesn't get up into the supers. But the worker bees can bring the honey up and put it in here. In the super are frames which the bees have built out from foundation and they are now filling it with nectar which will later be turned into honey. So if I show you this you will see that those cells are full of shiny nectar and the bees later on will reduce the water content and when it's turned into honey they will cap it with wax and after that we can extract it. Just looking to see if there's any with sealed wax. No there isn't. So I'm going to take this super off okay, and I'll put it down on top of the rail board. And here we have polystyrene super. Right, I've taken both supers off. Uh, before I go any further, just wanted to show you a frame from the super with sealed honey. You can see that the bees have sealed it with wax um, and it's now proper honey and we could extract that. Okay. So I'm now down to the main part of the hive. This thing here is called a queen excluder and basically it's, it's got gaps in it which allow worker bees through but doesn't allow the queen because the queen is a bit fatter and can't squeeze through. So she stays in this bottom box and she lays all the eggs and keeps the hive going. The workers can come and go through this queen excluder. As you can see, the bees stick things down pretty well, so I'm having to lever the crown board off, the um, queen excluder rather. Before I go any further, I always check the queen excluder to make sure that the queen isn't on it, because if she is, she could easily fall off, get lost in the grass, and then we'd have no queen, so we'd be in trouble. So there's no queen on there. And here we have the brood box. Now in the brood box, the frames are somewhat larger than the super frames. I'm going to start taking the frames out of the brood box. The first frame I take out is called a dummy frame. It's a blank frame with a piece of wood. 
it helps to keep the other frames tight and I can use it to cover up the bees, helps to keep them quiet, just having something to cover them. Now with the first frame, I loosen it with the hive tool, pull it back towards me like this and then I can lift it without rolling and squashing the bees. So I will change that frame later on uh, because it's getting a bit old and um, we can replace it with a piece of foundation. In fact I will do that now. So what I do is I simply shake the bees like that, shake them all off, I can get rid of that and I've got a frame of foundation. Foundation is simply a, a blank piece of wax imprinted with the pattern of the comb and the bees use that to build out their comb. So I'll put that in there. Next frame I pull it back towards me as you can see like that. Lift it again. This is a frame of foundation which was put in a couple of weeks ago. Covered in worker bees. You can see that the bees have started to draw it out and into their comb and you can see all the worker bees quietly going about their business. Next frame. Now this frame has got what we call brood on it. Uh, this is where the queen has laid eggs and um, they've been through various stages. First of all they were larvae and then they were capped as you can see here. I'll bring it closer now and eventually those will hatch out into worker bees. So these areas here, these is, that is capped worker brood. Ha! Ah, <clears throat> now we have the queen. You won't always find the queen when you go through a hive, um, but as, if you can find eggs in the hive, you know the queen is there. But in this case, we have found the queen. She's um, a nice orangey coloured queen, she's got a red mark on her. We put, I put the red mark on her. This is so we can easily see them, but also it can be used to indicate when the queen was born. So they have different colours for different years. So you can see the queen running around and the workers tend to follow her around. So I hope you can see that. So. Just to avoid dropping her, I will put her back. As I said, you can often go through a hive and not see the queen at all, but as long as there are eggs and brood in there, we're well, pretty safe that she's okay. So we've seen the queen. On this frame, You've got some domed cells. These are the worker brood. This is drone brood, which is domed uh, because the drones are slightly larger, so they tend to project from the from the comb. If you look very carefully in these cells, you would normally be able to see eggs, but they're very difficult to see um, on a camera. So. Uh, going to um, include a still photograph of the eggs. Here's a close-up of eggs in the bottom of the cells. You can see they look like little grains of rice. Another frame for the worker bees. 
lots of brood, lots of um, larvae on this one, which you may be able to see. The larvae are white, pearly white, shiny things in the cells. And this is at the stage before they're capped. Okay, so those are larvae. These bees are fairly calm. You find a lot of hives. Uh, the bees will fly around, make a lot of noise. Sometimes they'll bombard your veil. Um, that's fairly normal for British bees. Um, they don't normally make much effort to sting you. If they do, if they start trying to sting you through gloves and so on, then you've got an aggressive colony and um, there are things you can do about that to uh, either get rid of them or modify their behaviour. Okay, so more brood. I'm looking for some drones to show you. The drones, of course, are the male bees. And in the middle of this comb, you may be able to make out, if I can get the hive tool, they're much bigger and fatter than the worker bees and they've got large eyes. Okay, that's a drone there, male bee. Um, there could be 50,000 worker bees in this hive in the middle of summer. There would be two or three hundred drones, but they are essential obviously because they mate with the new queens. So there's a drone there. Right, in this area here, where the hive tool is, you can see some orangey coloured deposit in the cells. That's pollen. They store that separately from the honey and the brood, usually around the edges of the comb. And you can see there are different colours, some of it's more orangey, some of it's slightly greenish, and that depends on what the bees are feeding on at the time. This frame has a couple of clay cups or queen cups on it. Um, you can see them hanging down here. The entrance points downwards. Um, these are like tentative queen cells. Um, they could develop into queen cells, but as long as they haven't got um, an egg or a larva in them, no need to worry about them. If they have, then they will develop into queen cells, which means that the colony is likely to swarm. Okay, so what I would do now is simply put the hive back together and reassemble it. I'm being careful when I squeeze the frames together that the queen isn't um, in between the frames because you could squash her. 